applause for that wonderful election. <laughs> At this time, we would like to recognize those individuals that are visiting with us in our sanctuary, as well as our interviewing audience. If you are visiting with us, please stay and remain standing. Well, good morning, Central. Please be reminded for the following upcoming events. Our quarterly seed offering will be lifted on next Sunday, August 30th, during our 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. worship service. Baptism in the right hand of fellowship will be held on next Sunday, August 30th, at 545. We will observe our annual family and friends day on next Sunday, August 30th, during our 11 a.m. worship service. Our family and friends day choir will have rehearsal on Thursday, August 27th at 6 p.m. and Saturday, August 29th at 10 a.m. The Men's Day Committee will sponsor a family and friends bone tournament on Saturday, August 29th at the Royal Z Lanes, 8812 Two Nights Road from 1 o'clock through through 3 o'clock p.m. The Men's Day Choir will have rehearsal on the following Saturdays during the month of September at 10 a.m., September 5th, 12th, 19th, and 26th. Pastor Ezell will preach at the Penny Grove AME Church in Gaston, South Carolina on next Sunday, August 30th at 2.30 p.m., Reverend Judy Cunningham is their pastor. The male chorus will accompany the pastor. Please visit our website for additional announcements by logging on to www.centralbaptistcolumbia.org. Today's chapter is Luke chapter 19, verses 37 through 42. We now turn our services over to the pastor. Good morning, Central. Come on, say it like you mean it. Good morning, Central. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Hallelujah. I don't know about what you came to do, but I came to give God glory this morning. So if you're able, stand to your feet and let's give God a hand clap of praise this morning. Because he is worthy to be praised. From the going down of the sun, and the rising of the same, he is worthy. Hallelujah. He's a good God. And he is worthy of all praise and all honor and all glory. Good morning again, Central. Hallelujah. And part of God's goodness, part of his mercy is his willingness to allow us to give back a portion of what he's been given to us. And it tells us in the book of Proverbs around the third chapter, you may be seated, around the third chapter, around the ninth and the tenth verse, it says the following. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of all thine increase, so that thy barns be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst forth with new wine. Hallelujah. So God is telling us that if we do what he tells us to do, and give back the portion that he's given to us. And guess what? He's going to give us an overflowing blessing. Amen. That he is going to give us more than what we could ever expect if we just obey and do what he says. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So as you're considering God's goodness, let us please stand for a moment. Hallelujah. And let us pray over the tithes and the offerings. Let us pray. Heavenly Fathers, in the name of Jesus that we come. And Lord God, we give you thanksgiving this morning. We give you honor and glory because you allowed us to see another day. God, you did not promise us that, that we would have this opportunity, but you gave us mercy and you allowed us. You gave us the ability to see and the ability to have activities in our limb, and the blood is still flowing through our veins. And God, we say thank you. Lord God, we thank you for this opportunity to give a portion of what you've given back to us. Oh God, and we just thank you, and we're so honored that we're able to do it. God, we ask you to bless the ones who are able to give. 
Also bless those who have the heart and the mind to give, but not the resource, God, because we know that you create opportunity to give. And maybe not this time, but God, we know that next time you will. And Lord, we ask you to touch the heart of the ones who don't have the mind nor the heart to give, God. We ask you to prick their spirit and touch their heart so they will next time have the mind to give according to your riches and to your glory. And we ask it all, God, for it to be used for the glory of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. God, we thank you. And we say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Will the two outside aisles turn and face the wall? And the two inside aisles turn and face one another and follow the direction of the ushers.
church say amen. Let the church say amen. If you love the Lord, say amen again. Put your hands together and give God a hand clap of praise in the building. Amen, amen, amen. We greet you in the blessed name of God, our Father, Jesus, our Redeemer, the Holy Spirit, our Comforter, and our Guide. God will look out grace, looked out for us when we could not look out for ourselves. And a God would look beyond grace, look beyond our faults, supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory, and he is truly worthy to be praised. We thank God on this morning for our presiding office, presiding worship leader, Akira Hutchison. We praise God much for her. We thank God that Shayla Mack led us in our prayer on this morning. And we thank God in advance for Jada as she will lead us in our scripture reading. We say to our young people every fourth Sunday, we're proud of you. Always give God your best because God gave you his very best. Let's give all our young people a wonderful hand on today. Reminding you on our announcements, our upcoming events that on next Sunday at 5.45 p.m. we will have our right hand of fellowship and our baptism as we welcome new members. We just completed our new members orientation class and had a great class for seven weeks. We thank you for your attendance at our new members orientation class. On next Sunday is a busy day, 8 o'clock service, 11 o'clock service, and at 2.30, I'll be preaching at the Pine Grove Church in Gaston. Reverend Judy Cunningham is the pastor. Mother Allen, that's Sister Mary Lee Garrison, daughter, Deacon Mitchum's sister's daughter. And she'll be, she's a pastor of that church. And since it's family connection, we want to go there and maintain those connections as much as we possibly can. So we're looking forward to that fellowship. Then we'll be back here at 545. Amen. For the right hand of fellowship for our new members. So we're looking forward to that as well. I uh, remind you that our um, Men's Day Committee sponsored a family and friend bowling tournament on Saturday the 29th at the Roger Z Lane. Now, they said the real bowlers at Central have their own bowling ball. The real bowlers have their own shoes. Now, that's what they say now. That's what I was told. That, that, that I think the sign up we, in the back, you can sign up and get your coupon. But if for five dollars, basically real bowlers already have that stuff. They have the ball that's made for their hand. Amen, somebody. Amen. Uh, from one to three o'clock, as the old folks said, we shall see. Amen, somebody. Be a good time of fellowship, and we're looking forward to that. Amen. We're excited to the day that they represents our academic honor roll recognition, our scholarship committee up in the leadership of Deacon Ernest Sino Berry does a wonderful job of bringing together, interpreting the grades, interpreting the averages, make sure we recognize our student. We do everything we can to encourage our student. Now, on the fourth Sunday in September, which is about a month away, and, and our fourth Sunday, we're going to give it our scholarship. We have seven students from the church who will be getting $500 each from the church. Somebody will say amen. <laughs> For the scholarships, all of our students are pretty much in state, the seven who are in state this year, and we have one, I think, in North Carolina. Amen. Now, I don't know anywhere in South Carolina that you have missed the full Sunday it don't cost five hundred dollars worth of gas. Amen, somebody. If somebody was gonna give me five hundred dollars, I believe I can make my way. Back on the full sun. Amen, somebody. But let me help them just a little bit, Deacon Ezra Barry. Now we understand student go off to school, they can't get back. We do that. Well, on the fourth Sunday, if you're not able to make it, we understand that. But we're not going to present it to any parents. 
any grandparents, any big mamas, any nanas, any papas. Amen, somebody. We just uh, wait till the next full Sunday till you can get here. Amen. Amen. We're just going to have it on hold for you until you can get here. We got mighty quiet in here this thing. Huh? Because South Carolina is a small state. You get anywhere in South Carolina, what, two hours? Two hours and a half at the Mac Bible? You could drive in and out of South Carolina within two hours. Amen. And we want our young people to see other young people in the church being recognized. But it has to be important to you, parents, and important to the young adults. Amen. Even though you guys said they got to stay on camps and work this week, they ain't going to make no $500 that day. Not on camp. They ain't making no $500. Not working in school. So have your students here. Have them here so we can recognize. Emergencies do occur. And we understand that. We just emergency delay you till the next time we get together. Is that all right? Is that fair? If it's fair, put your hands together. I like that because everybody clapping didn't have any graduated students who were supposed to get the $500. <laughs> but we're going to work it out so that God gets the glory. Again, Deacon Clark, we're going to thank you and your family for affording us the opportunity to share with you on yesterday. I think it was a great celebration. Thank you for the opportunity. And we recognize Deaconess Bonaparte when we left your place. We went to share with her on her birthday celebration. I just like celebrating with our people. I mean, I do enough funerals. I like to celebrate some good times. Amen. So we praise God for the fellowship that we shared on yesterday. Let us prepare now at this time as our scholarship committee come for. Do we still call it a scholarship? Is it education? What do we call it? Oh, let me get more refined. The education committee. Well, our education committee come forth at this time. <laughs> ministry come forward we remind our parents that it is our intention to recognize each and every one of our young people but please be reminded that we do require that our young people participate in the ministries the youth ministries here at Central in order to receive recognition today we will be recognizing the fourth marking period of the 2014 2015 school year as we begin another school year, we do realize that some of our young people may need help or assistance in academics, and we do ask if you do need help or any of your young people need help, please call the church office, and we will be glad to give the assistance that's needed. Thank you very much, Ms. McMillan. will come forward to present the names of our academic achievers. Good morning. It is my pleasure to announce the recipients of the fourth marking period honor roll for the 2014-2015 school term. First, the principals list. These students will receive a certificate and $30 in cash. And those students are Lauren Hannibal. Lauren is the daughter of Tamara and John Hannibal Sr. And if the parents are present, please stand when your child's name is called. Next student on the principal's list, Victor Jones. Victor is the son of Veronica and Victor Jones Sr. Please give our principal's list recipients a round of applause. Next, we will have the A honor roll recipients. These students will receive a certificate and $20 in cash. John Hannibal Jr. John is the son of Tamara and John Hannibal Sr. Danielle Hogsett. Danielle is the daughter of Fred and Cheryl Hogsett. Brock Jackson. 
Brock is the son of Deacon Evan and Deaconess Kathy Neitner. Jonathan King. Jonathan is the son of Johnny and Keila King. Christian Livingston. Christian is the daughter of Deacon Harold and Deaconess Julie Livingston. Jordan Livingston. Jordan is also the daughter of Deacon Harold and Deaconess Julie Livingston. Dante McMillan. Dante is the son of Dwayne and Charlene Sales McMillan. Gabrielle Montgomery. Gabrielle is the daughter of Sandy and Leslie Montgomery. Jackson Montgomery. Jackson is also the daughter of Sandy and Leslie Montgomery. Jalen Phillips. Jalen is the son of Deacon Rodney and Reverend Karen Phillips. Shayla Phillips. Shayla is also the daughter of Deacon Rodney and Reverend Karen Phillips. Talia Pugh. Talia is the daughter of Johnny and Keila King. Kiera Savage. Kiera is the daughter of Glenn and Tara Savage. Ashley Taylor. Ashley is the daughter of Deacon Jesse and Deaconess Yvette Taylor. Joshua Taylor. Joshua is the grandson of George and Minnie Taylor. Jada Wilson. Jada is the daughter of Dwayne and Linda Wilson. Brittany Wright. Brittany is the daughter of Deacon Bobby and Deaconess Tony Wright. Please give a hand to our A honor roll recipients. Our B honor roll recipients. These students will receive a certificate and $15 in cash. Precious Breland. Precious is the daughter of Arnita and the late Eugene Phelps. Keon Brown. Keon is the son of April Rainey and Earl Brown. Lanisha Brown. Lanisha is the daughter of Lenoris and Tabitha Brown. Trinity Gilliard. Trinity is the granddaughter of Greg and Deborah Folks. Natalie Geddes. Natalie is the daughter of Bernard and Patricia Geddes. Jada Jones. Jada is the daughter of Veronica and Victor Jones, Sr. Cameron Loring. Cameron is the daughter of Lahartha Phelps and Jacob Loring. Makai O'Berry. Makai is the grandson of Deacon Samuel and Deaconess Ernestine O'Berry. Brittany Phillips. Brittany is the daughter of Deacon Rodney and Reverend Karen Phillips. That concludes the B Honor Roll students, but please give a round of applause for all of our fourth marking period Honor Roll for the 2014-2015 school term. To God be the glory.
At this time, let us prepare for the reading of our scripture. And on the day, we want to thank God for the presence in our rostrum of the Reverend Karen Phillips and the Reverend Dr. Hezekiah Carpez. Let us stand as Jada Brooks comes to lead us in the reading of our scripture, followed by our selection by our young adult choir, then we'll return with the preach word. Good morning, Central. Today's scripture is Luke chapter 9, verses 37 through 42. And it came to pass that on the next day, when they were come down from the hill, much people met him. And behold, a man from the company cried out, saying, Master, I beseech thee, look upon my son, for he is my only child. And, lo, a spirit taketh him, and he suddenly crieth out, and it teareth him, that he foameth again, and bruising him hardly departeth from him. And I besought thy disciples to cast him out, and they could not. Jesus answering said, O faithless and, per and perverse generation, how long shall I how long shall I be with you and suffer you? Bring thy son hither. And as he was yet a coming, the, the devil threw him down and tear him. And Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit and healed the child and delivered him again to his father. God's word for God's people.
Savior. Come on and say, Savior. Savior. Yes, he's my Savior. My healer. My deliverer. He's my leader. Do not have me I don't want the Lord to pass your life. Come on in. Yeah. take this opportunity to thank Jada for leading us in the reading of scripture, the gospel according to Luke chapter number nine. I want to focus in on verse number 39. Chapter nine, verse number 39. And lo, a spirit taken him. We're speaking in reference to a father who has an only child who has been overtaken by a demonic spirit. And this child suddenly cries out. The spirit was so heavy on this child that he was crying out and it tarried him. He began to foam again. Bruising him hotly departed from him. In other words, the enemy had attacked a father's son. And when the enemy attacks our children, our response in the sermonic thought is, this means war. Our response is, this means war. My brothers and my sisters, may I suggest on this day that there are some wars that are worth fighting. Uh-huh. I grew up in the hood in Fort Valley, Georgia, straight in the hood. And by growing up in the hood, there was some fighting words that you couldn't say in the hood. If you said these two words, it was on. 
in the hood now i'm not talking about in the suburbs where a lot of you all grew up i'm, I'm talking about the hood where the red dirt the red mud the shotgun houses i'm talking about the clothes lines i wash by in the hood where they raise the window with the stick up under i'm talking about the hood where i grew up at where you didn't have any locks on the doors i'm talking about the hood Amen. Where well, I was two at the head of the bed, two at the foot of the bed. The hood. I'm not talking about the neighborhood. The neighbors left. It was just a hood. Where I grew up in. That was some fighting words. You could be playing ball and you can miss a layup. You could be playing baseball and they throw a pitch and they say, you missed that pitch. Even Stevie Wonder saw that pitch come. I'm talking about in the hood. That's all right. We can take all of that. But the fighting words in the neighborhood in Georgia where I came from was, yo. I'm just trying to see that some of y'all grow up like I did. Uh, if you wanted a fight going on, say something about your mama. Those were fighting words growing up in the hood. Those were fighting words, amen. There are some battles we have to engage in. We have to move from just being on the sidelines and get into the game of life. From being a spectator to being a participant. From being a professor to being a possessor. There were nine individuals who lost their lives in Charleston and the killer was photographed with a picture of a Confederate flag that symbolized hate and not heritage nor history. And the people of this state united to gather to declare that we cannot idly stand by. The result was that the Confederate flag was removed from the state house ground. Now I know that the flag was removed, but let me tell you, until there's a change of heart. Huh? Until there's a transformation of heart, you can take the flag down. That's visibly down. But some hearts have to change. During my tenure as moderator of the Get Seminary Baptist Association, many times we would have to go in and, and deal with disputes as it relates to churches and, and things that were going on. And I was in one church a few years back, and the pastor got up, and the pastor said, uh, according to the word of God, and the deacon got up and said, now, Ray up now, God ain't got nothing to do with what's going on here. I said to myself, this is going to be a long me. When you open up the meeting and say, God don't have nothing. God has to do with something going on everywhere, all the time, in any place. But when we reduce God down to our level, and in the church dispute, so many members say, we don't want to get involved. We can't sit back and not get involved. If you're wrong, you're just wrong. I don't care what, what your family like, who stands by you, and all that other stuff. Wrong is wrong. Amen? And as believers, we cannot sit by idly and stand by. We must get involved. When the enemy launches attack, particularly upon our children, every good and perfect gift come from God above, I want you to know when they attack our children, I'm getting ready to put my war clothes on. Because I want you to know this means war. Hmm? Let us examine our text. Jesus, Peter, James, and John came down from the mountain. A huge crowd met Jesus. This crowd included the rest of Jesus' disciple, some teachers of religious law, and a group of followers and onlookers. Dr. Carpets, this was just after the experience of the uh, Mount of Transfiguration. And Jesus didn't take all the disciples with him. I just said something. Now, a great history, a lesson in life, he did not take all his disciples with him. Uh, when you're about to experience a mountaintop experience, everybody can't go with you. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody can't handle what the Lord is getting ready to take you or what is getting ready to happen in your life. Because see, people can't be happy with other folks when that stuff is jacked up and whacked up. You got to be a real strong person to celebrate when things are not going well in your life. To celebrate what the Lord is doing for somebody else. I, I wish I had a praying church in here. But that's, a, that's where spiritual maturity and growth comes in. Just because the Lord is not doing it for me now don't mean it won't do it. 
So I've learned to celebrate what he's doing in your life. If I can celebrate your blessing, then my blessings are just right around the corner. Do I have a witness in here that, that see, 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 it's hard to open up and share with people if they are struggling and the Lord is blessing you. Uh, it's hard for folks to rejoice in your success when everything in their life is falling apart. It's, it's hard for folks to reap the harvest of what's going on with you when they can't even get a breakthrough through. But I've learned that if I'm just patient enough and faithful enough if I can celebrate what God has done for you then it's just a matter of time before the Lord opens up the door and bless me the same way uh, do I have a witness in here I don't know about you but I've learned just to praise him anyhow and I, when I learned to praise him anyhow uh, I can be on the mountaintop today but uh, see a mountaintop experience will lead you right down in the valley you can't stay on the mountaintop all your life you gotta come down from the mountaintop and spend a little time in the valley but just like I praise him when things were going well I, I can praise him when I'm down I can praise him when I'm struggling I, I can praise him when I'm going through do I have a witness in him every now and then you got to learn to praise him when it doesn't look like you have any reason to praise him you got to learn to praise him in the midst of the struggle and, and in the midst of the battle you you just got to learn to praise him anyhow and I believe here today we got some anyhow praise us that, that you made up in your mind that I'm going to praise him anyhow that any way you fix it Lord it's, it's alright with me that I'm, I'm going to praise him anyhow I, I may not have all you have but I, I still have a reason to praise him I, I may not have it going on like you have it going on but I still got a reason to praise him I may be struggling with my finances but I, I still got a reason to praise him I may have pain all over my body but I still have a reason to praise him do I have any anyhow praises in here that I'm going to praise you anyhow Lord that anyhow you fix it Lord that it's alright with me any, anyhow you Bless me, Lord. It's all right with me that hear you know how you make a way, Lord. It's all right with me. I, I'm going to praise him anyhow. Mm. After the mountaintop transfiguration experience, Christ encountered a serious demon problem which he had cured, which he cured. Many mountaintop experiences are followed by valley problems. Uh, many mountaintop experiences are followed by valley problems. But the mountaintop experience ought to prepare us for the problems we encounter in the valley. Our text reminds us that a man had brought his only son, who was possessed by an evil spirit. While the symptoms described by the father sounded much like an epileptic conversion, the destructive intent of the demon was described by the father. The demon was injuring his son. The demon was calling hurt to his child. The demon that had possessed his child was causing his child to cry out. This was more than mere epilepsy. It was indeed a case of demon possession. Mark's gospel revealed that the boy could neither speak nor hear. This desperate man wanted his child to be freed from the demon. A good parent wants that. A good parent does not want to see that child hurting, in pain, or going through. I've been in so many hospital rooms where I had parents that say to me, Pastor, if I could trade places with my child, I gladly trade places. When your child is laying there hurting tubes and things hooked up to them and they're in pain, you would take the place of your child in a minute. That's what a good parent would do. So he brought his son to Jesus and his disciple. The disciples couldn't do it. The disciples could, could not cure him of the demon, the, the demon that possessed him. Could I surmise today that many of us are going to folks who can't do us any good? Huh? Could I surmise today that sometimes we're going to the wrong source, thinking that that source can help us because they supposed to be, unquote, connected? They're supposed to be movers and shakers in Columbia. Can I tell y'all a secret? Most folk can't move nothing, they can't shake nothing. <laughs> uh -huh. Can I tell you a secret? The disciples couldn't do it. The text does not explain the reason for their failure. 
Matthew explained it as the disciples' lack of faith. Mark described it as a need for prayer. These references are to the same text. The disciples certainly tried, but the demon did not respond. Jesus saw the failure of the disciples who cast out this demon as merely one more indication of stubbornness and faithlessness that surrounded him. The disciples were not singled out for rebuke, but they reflected an attitude prevalent in their society. Jesus would not stay with them forever. One day he would leave and the Holy Spirit would come. The Spirit could help soften stubborn heart. In the meantime, Jesus would battle this unbelief, but he would not leave this young boy in this horrible condition. So Jesus told the Father, bring the son to me. And behold, a man of the company cried out, saying, Master, I beseech thee, look upon my son, for he's not just a child, but he is my only child. Master, the man supplicating Christ showed respect by calling him master. He cried out, I beseech thee. The man made an earnest plea. If we want God to be earnest about our requests, we need to be earnest in how we make them. Hmm? He is my only child. Afflicted child in this case was an only child, which created more of a pathos for the case. But to cast him out, they could not. This complaint was only while the man came to Christ. The complaint was condemnatory of the disciples in two ways. It revealed their deficiency. They could not. They did not have the spiritual power to terminate the demon. They could not describe. This could describe that many of our churches could not. Could it be in the church that we have less miracles because we don't have the power? Huh? Could as believers we've allowed our tanks to become so spiritually dry that we don't have the power? That's why we can't speak things in Jesus' name and expect them to happen because we don't have the power. Mm. Governments don't have the power. Schools don't have the power. Oh, it's only power in the name of Jesus. Listen what it said. Lo, a spirit taketh him. He suddenly cries out, it tarreth him. He foamed again, bruising him hardly, and it departed from him that unclean spirit. In supplicating the Lord, the man gives some details of the affliction which his boy is experiencing. It certainly was a bad situation. It says, spirit taketh him. The word spirit refers to the demon problem. Demon possession was burdensome plague when Christ was on earth. It is still around today. Could it be, my brothers and sisters, that many times when our children are going through stuff, and we are, we, are, we are beating them down, we're all over them. Could it be that it's not your child, but it's that demon that has possessed your child? Huh? Could it be that spirit that is upon your child, that's causing your child to behave in such a manner? Could it be we're spending too much time talking at the child and not speaking to the spirit? Huh? Huh? It is still around. The word translated unclean means impure and lewd. Evil does not purify, it defiles. He suddenly cried out. The tax came on with dispatch. There was no warning. Suddenly the child would cry in distress when the demon attack hit him. The adverse consequence of evil came upon people like that. The word translated tarith means, tarith means to convulse. Almost spasmodic. The devil is in the business of making people dysfunctional. It said he foameth. Foameth is considered his uncontrolled slobber. In football, we said just nasty spit. Evil speaking can be described as uncontrolled slobber. From the mouth is devil inspired. Bruising him, the demon made the boy most uncomfortable. Sin promised much pleasure, but it brings much discomfort. And the words fail to describe the great discomfort that sin can bring. Hartley departed from him. We learned in the report of this incident in Mark that this affliction had bothered this young boy since he was a child. It stayed with him for a long time. So when, when they looked at the condition of this young boy, young boy who was not himself, a young child who was not himself, he was overtaken by a demonic spirit. The spirit tarried away at him, caused him to cry out, caused him to foam at the mouth. When we see this condition going on today, we must declare that this means war. There are some things we must fight for. 
First of all, I want to look at the request in this text. The request in Luke 9, 41 said, bring thy son hither. In other words, Jesus said, bring him to me. Huh? He said, bring him to me. What is he saying to us today? Move out the masculinity of the son. It could be a daughter. But what Jesus said is, bring your child to me. Uh-huh. No matter what is going on, I, I know you're taking them to counseling, and I, I know I know I know they've been through school programs. I, I know you dealt with psychology and all that other stuff, but bring that child to me. That's the first request that is made right here. In other words, bring your troubles to Jesus. Jesus is the key to sorrowing your problem. When all others fail, I want you to know that Jesus would never fail. There have been many times that I've talked to God about my problem. But I've learned to talk to my problems about my God. That I have a witness in hell. Where a man like the disciple could not cast out the demon. That they may fail you. But Jesus never will. I feel the spirit of my grandmama now. Said that Jesus is on the main line. Just call him up and tell him what you want. That I have a witness in hell. He is the one who can deliver us from evil. Neither is our salvation in any other name except the name on the heaven given among men where we must be saved. I stopped by to tell you that, that the, 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 the request was bring that child to me. As he was yet coming, the devil threw him down. And the devil tarried, tarried him. When you're trying to get your child in the presence of the Lord, the enemy would launch out an all attack against you and your child. The closer you try to get to the Lord, the busier the devil would get on the throne. And the devil would try to destroy that relationship that you're trying to establish for your child. But I stopped by here today with the email fresh from Hallelujah and Glory Boulevard. Then downloading it right now that the devil is a liar that this means war when you launch attack against our son launch attack against our daughter launch attack against our family as believers we won't stand by for this means war I want you to know as he was making his way to the Lord the devil threw him down evil does not give up easily like a bad tenant who has been evicted from a house the demon would do as much damage as they possibly can before leaving. Eva likes to make it appear that when you remove it, society will be in trouble. But you got to always make your request. Philippians 4, 6, and 7 says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be known unto God. And he'll give you a peace that surpasses all understanding. Let your requests be made known. Matthew 20 and 21, then came to him, the mother of Zebedee's children with her son, worshiping him, and she made a certain request. And she said unto her, what would I have? She said unto him, grant that these my two sons may sit one on the right hand, another one on the left hand. We talk about a request as being made. Then Jesus went with them. And when he was now not far from the house, the centurion servant made a request that he would come to his house. But he got a servant that was grievously sick. But then he sent another request. Said, Lord, I'm not worthy for you to come under my roof. But if you just say the word, <laughs> I got a feeling that everything is going to be all right. I have a witness here. I don't deserve, Lord, for you to show up at my house. But if you just show the, say the word, I don't deserve, Lord, for you to intervene on my job. But if you just say the word. I don't deserve, Lord, for you to heal my body. But if you just say the word, I, I got a feeling that everything is going to be all right. Is there anybody here ever had to call on the name of the Lord and just say, say the word in here? I believe if you just say the word that everything will be all right. If you say the word, I believe that by your stripes will I be healed. If I just say, if you say the word, I believe that his grace is sufficient. If you just say the word, I believe that Lord is my shepherd. And I shall not walk. If you just say the word, I believe that weeping may endure for the night, but joy will come in the morning time. If you just say the word, I believe you wipe all tears away from my eyes. If you just say the word, I believe that. His grace is sufficient. If you just say the word, I believe that no weapon that's formed against me shall prosper. Ah, 
uh, you got to make your request. This means war. Let the Lord know what you would have them. Secondly, you got to learn to rebuke some stuff. Huh? Watch this. In Luke 9, 42, watch what it says. Luke 9, 42, it said that as he was yet coming, the devil threw him down and tell him, but Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit. Huh? He rebuked the spirit. Is that not what the Bible say? Uh, he rebuked the unclean spirit. That which had the boy bound up is what Jesus rebuked. Now I'm saying too much of the time we're rebuking the children and not the spirit that's bound the children. Jesus rebuked the spirit. Huh? He rebuked. You cannot have victory over evil without rebuking it. Ah, uh, Matthew 8, 23 through 27 reminds us when he entered into the ship, his disciples followed him. And behold, there was a great tempest and the sea of storm came about. And Jesus was chilling, he was asleep. His disciples came to him and awoke him and said, Lord, save us, for we perish. And he said unto them, why are you so fearful? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the sea. He rebuked what was causing the problem. Uh, and he cried out with a loud voice and said, what have I to do with this, this man who's in the cemetery in Mark the fifth chapter? And Jesus rebuked the spirit that had him bound up. Uh, you better start rebuking some stuff in your life that you got to learn to rebuke. Don't just go along to get along. You got to learn to rebuke some stuff. Let me throw something out today for our young people on, 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 on this youth day and remind you of some things that you're preparing to go back. Uh, I said on this morning, I, I'm old school, and I don't apologize for being old school, but we got to go back training our sons and our daughters in the old landmark. You can't throw out the baby with the bathwater. You got to do some training. Why neither does one of your husband would his favor say. You can't throw out the baby with the bathwater. Everything that new don't mean you throw out everything that's old. You got to learn how to mix it. Uh, they call it a remix. <laughs> Old school and new school. Can I get a witness of that? You got to learn how to remix some stuff together. Yeah, you just can't throw out everything. I, 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 I'm from that old school and I, I, I just believe that mamas, it's hard to train your daughters to be ladies when you're partying with them. I, 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 I'm, I, I'm just old school. Can I, can, I, can I help somebody in here? Mom, it's hard to teach your daughter to pull her dress down when yours is too high. Can I, can, I, can I be old school in here? Can, can I be old school? Daddy, you can't always be your son buddy. Somebody got to be the daddy. Can, can, I, can I be old school in here? We got to learn something. See, see, you can't allow your daughter to be in your house talking about going out on a date and somebody pull up to your house and blow a horn and she run out the door. If that Negro don't respect your daughter enough to come ring your doorbell and to speak to you, don't you let your daughter leave the house with them. She out there peeping out the window. He come up there rolling up on some rims and pop that music loud and blowing his horn. And she running out to him. He ought to be running to you. You ought not to have to run to him. If he don't respect you, your mama or your daddy enough to get his nappy head out of that car and come and ring your doorbell, you tell that Negro pastor say it bye. be some respect somewhere young lady don't you start letting these brothers hit on you early I'm talking about physically putting their hands on you and then they put their hands on you and scare you you better not tell nobody I did it boo I just love you boo I was just upset boo I had a bad day boo uh, he gonna have some more bad days uh, he, that's just an excuse of him hitting you but if he hit you one time he gonna hit you again 
and then you walk around putting makeup on and shaking in your own house and he got you on lockdown he got to know where you've been and who you've been with and you got to call him every five minutes and text him every five minutes like you in prison with somebody you're young right now you ought to be living your life and having a good time and I, you don't love nobody that much that you need to be with them 24 hours a day everybody get tired of somebody sometime it ain't that much love in the world then they threaten you if you tell anybody I'm gonna kill you I'm gonna kill your mama and I'm gonna kill your daddy right see then you know you don't have a man you got a mouse a mouse don't put his hands on no young lady a mouse doesn't beat a woman a man puts his hands around a woman a man loves a woman a man caress a woman you ain't nothing but a little boy that need a toy beat upon if you're a real man you don't raise your hand to hit a woman huh be who you are don't let them threaten you with that stuff. Tell your dad, I'm, I get him. Tell him, my pastor said he my dad, to roll up on him. <laughs> Don't let this robe fool you. Huh? We got these folks threatening you. See, daddies, you got to stand up for your daughter's daddy. You got to stand up for your son. The reason my boys know how to treat a woman, they see how I treat their mama. If they don't see daddy stepping up, if they don't see daddy doing anything, they don't ever see daddy buying mama nothing. They don't ever see daddy taking mama shopping. See daddy treating mama like an old slave, keep them barefooted and in the kitchen. Daddy's got to step up. Brothers, we have to step up. We got to show our daughter what a man is supposed to be like. Uh, you got to rebuke some stuff. Watch this. Don't you be so Baptist you scared to rebuke. Don't you be so Baptist you scared to rebuke. Huh? We get caught up in the awe. We scared of somebody anointing us with all. All the ceremonies, but it's a prayer of faith that did the same. But can I suggest to you that every now and then you need to go in every room of your house and start anointing and start rebuking something that's going on in your house. Uh, I rebuke that thing that she's going out with now and anoint the wall and anoint the bed and anoint your daughter's shoes and anoint your son's clothes. You better not be so scared to anoint it. I rebuke it right now in the name of Jesus. I rebuke that gang that's trying to get my child. Pull all, all over the top of his head and grease him down if you have to. I rebuke the lies. I rebuke gangs. I, I rebuke what they're trying to do because my son is a warrior. He's a leader. He has greatness in him. And my job is to help get that greatness out of him. I dare you to rebuke something. Go on your job tomorrow and go by that hateful person you work with. Walk by their seat. Don't put no oil on it. But because you know an unseen spirit there, just walk by the seat and say, come out. You better speak to that spirit in there. Walk by the desk and say, come out. Walk in the kitchen and say, come out. Walk in the room and say, come out. Walk in the dining room and say, come out. You better speak speak to that spirit you better rebuke some stuff around here that the devil is a liar you better rebuke some stuff around here my daughter's not a punching bag you better rebuke some stuff around here it's not anybody bold enough in Jesus name this means war first of all that's a request Second, there's a rebuke. But third, there's a restoration. Look at verse 42 again, same verse. There is restoration. It said, Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit. First, all the request had to be made. Then the rebuke came in. The restoration is that he healed the child. And then guess what he said? He delivered him to his daddy. Oh, I wish I was doing a Father's Day message right there. He rebuked the child, Deacon William came back and gave the child to his daddy. I'm going to put you in the hands of the one who's supposed to set an example for you to follow. 
I'm not putting you in the hands of, of, of your mama. A mama can only do so much. In order for the boy to be a man, he needs to see a man. Huh? I'm going to put you in the hands of your father. So restoration came about. I stop it and let somebody know God is still in the restoration business. Both health and the home were restored. And because both health and the home was restored, the child was healed and given back to his father. As I make my way to a close, I want to remind somebody that God is still a deliverer and that God is still a restorer. Don't you give up on your children and be willing to go to bat for them because every good and perfect gift comes from God above. Do I have a witness in here? God has made us stewards over our children and someday we're going to have to go before God, Deacon O'Berry, and give God an account how well we've handled our children. Deacon Willie Bryan, I don't know how you feel, but I'm so glad about it that we have a model that we can look after. I'm so glad that because Jesus was loving and forgiving that as family members and parents, we can do the same thing. And Deacon Livingston, I don't know how you feel about it, but I can look toward the hill. From whence cometh my help? Not some of my help. Not a part of my help. But somebody shout on. Oh, my help comes from the law. Do I have a witness in here? Well, I'm so glad, Deacon Anthony Scott, that I've learned to praise him for the gift that God has given me. And Deacon Jesse Taylor, Bobby Wright, and, and Deacon Cecil Thomas and Terry Scott and Ronnie Taylor, I've learned to just praise God for what the Lord has done. And I've learned to praise him, Dr. Carpez, for what the Lord is doing right now. Well, I'm not a perfect parent, but I tried to do the very best I could to raise my sons in the fear and admonition of the law. Because the word of God said, train up a child when he's young. And when he's old, that he will not depart. So I've learned just to train him and lean on, depend on the law. For I've learned in times like these, you can't raise your child all by yourself. If you don't have the Lord on your side, it's going to be a tough battle for you along the way. But I stopped by the day to put the devil on notice. To let the devil know that this is war. Do I have any help in him? Well, Charles Jenkins, when he penned the song that this is war, Charles Jenkins said, I got joy in my soul, but God is in control. I got Satan on my trail, but I'm singing all is well. Do I have a witness in him? He's attacking me every day, but I'm watching while I pray. No matter the attack, that I won't turn back. Do I have a witness in him? Somebody shout, I won't turn back. Shout, I won't turn back. Get him at the microphone, Anthony. I won't turn back. For this means war. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. Is there anybody here that's willing to plead the blood of Jesus over your children and over your family? How many know there's power that's in the blood? There's healing that's in the blood. Well, Charles said, I've been in the storm and I've been in the rain. But the blood is still the same. That whatever's going wrong, I have my war clothes on. I might be in a daze, but you can't have my praise. No matter the attack, for I won't turn back. Do I have a witness in here? Start putting your hands together. That just means war. We got a message for the devil on the day. That you can't have my family. You can't have my increase. You can't have my breakthrough. I wish I had a witness in hell. Say it after I say it. Say, you can't have my family. Shout family. You can't have my increase. Shout increase. You can't have my breakthrough. Shout breakthrough. Then when you can't think anything else, just say, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't have. Is there anybody here that'll give my God the praise and the glory? For this means war. Come on, choir. Let me hear you.
marching while I pray. No matter the attack, I won't turn back. This means. I got joy in my soul. Yeah. God is in control. Z. I got Satan on my trail. You better say I'm singing all is well. Yeah. He's attacking every day. But I'm watching while I pray. No matter the attack, I won't turn back. But this means more. Come on, church. Put those hands together. This means. This means. This means I plead the blood. Storm and the rain, but the blood still stays the same. Whatever's going wrong, my war clothes are on, and I might be in a day, but you can't have my praise. No matter the attack, I won't turn back. Cause this means more. Say this means more. Say this means more. You can't have my, you can't, you can't, you can't, I plead. There's power in the blood. Healing in the blood. Power in the blood. Say this me.
Come on, rock with that combo back. Beat that thing, rock, whatever you call it. Beat it. While we stand and keep it low right there, position. Keep it low while we stand. Let me extend the invitation. Right, while we stand, let me say. While we're standing today, there may be someone up under. Keep, keep that beat going. There may be someone up under the sound of my voice who's a part of our church family today, who is not a part of our church family, but desires to be a part. We extend the invitation to Christian discipleship. You may come by letter a candidate for baptism or under your Christian experience. This is a good time to make up your mind. I want to be on the Lord's side at this particular Bethel spot. We need our village to come together. Let's put our hands together. Let's put our hands together. Let's celebrate. Would I be another today? Let us step out from where you are. Take me down, 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 down. I'll bring you back in. Amen. I know it feels good. They got to playing this morning. They were so happy playing. They felt like they were released. Like I had, I had been holding them down for years, D. I told them, now, I'll go back to the record schedule next Sunday. So I let them just float this morning. Amen. Amen. Would I be another today up under the sound of my voice? I don't know what you're going to but you got to make up your own mind today. What a wonderful opportunity to step out from where you are. Give the pastor your hand and give God your heart. See, I, I want to be a part of a growing church, a, a moving church, but I want to be a part of a warm, welcoming church. I want to be a part of a church that I feel better when I come, when I leave, than I did when I came. Amen. Y'all would have to make, admit, there ain't a bunch of drama that goes on around here. You come here, you feel safe. You can worship the Lord. Ain't nobody up fighting with each other about no drama crazy stuff. Deacons and pastors ain't fighting. Pastors and trustees ain't fighting. And nobody has time for all that craziness in worship. Amen. We need to be on one accord. We don't need to fight each other. We need to fight the real enemy. Amen, somebody. So there will not be another one today that will step out from where you are. We will receive you today. There's a sweet spirit that's in this place. And I know it's the spirit of the Lord. Just tarry where you are just one moment. Sometimes we move too fast. And we don't wait on the Lord. Just tarry right where you are. Come on, mother, take your time right there. Take your time. You're driving real good down the highway. Take your time now. We got to have patience with our seniors. Because guess what? We all hit it there. Every day when I make a step, I find I'm getting closer there. Amen, somebody. Bow your head for a word of prayer then. While you're bowing your head, I want you to put your hand on the person in front of you. Put your hand, put both hands on the person in front of you. You don't have to turn, just stick your hands out. Not holding hands, stick both hands.